beautiful evening to you and a warm welcome to Super Screen News at 6, broadcasting to you live from our studios in Lagos, Southwest Nigeria. I am Blessed Omonose. Here are stories and reports making the rounds. The National Industrial Court of Nigeria in Abuja has rejected a request for a fresh order stopping the organized labor from embarking on its planned indefinite strike scheduled to commence on Tuesday. The court presided over by Justice Sanusi Kadu refused to grant a prayer for an order to compel the government to immediately commence the process of adopting 30,000 Naira as the new minimum wage. According to Justice Kadu, it will be unnecessary to make another order stopping labor from embarking on the planned strike, having earlier made a similar one in a case brought to the court by the federal government last Friday. And still on the labor strike, Senate President Bukala Saraki has appealed to both the federal government and the leadership of the Nigerian Labor Congress, NLC, and the Trade Union Congress, TUC, to work together in order to avert the proposed worker strike in the interest of Nigeria. Saraki will disclose this in a statement by Special Advisor Yusuf Olaniu urged the two sides to demonstrate sensitivity and concern for the plight of ordinary Nigerians who are already battling with the current, current harsh economic conditions in the country. He also expressed appreciation for the patience displayed by the labor leaders, adding that the issue of the new minimum wage could have been resolved long before now. And away from labor matters now talking politics, the People's Democratic Party, PDP, has accused the All Progressive Congress, APC, of panicking over a recent meeting in Dubai involving some of its members and its presidential candidate, Atiku Abubakar. Spokesman of the party, Kola Olobodinyong, who disclosed this in a statement, said, APC is panicking because it failed to deliver on the promises it made in the past. The party also claimed that since the emergence of Atiku Abubakar as its presidential candidate, the presidency and the APC have abandoned governance for a smear campaign because they know that the outcome will dismount their competent, deceitful and disconnected administration. The Independent National Electric Commission, INEC Chairman Yakubu Ma Mahmoud, says the commission will commence the display of the National Register of Voters at polling units across the country on Tuesday. The INEC Chairman disclosed this when ECOWAS fact the delegation, led by Chairman National Electric Commission for Syria Loan and leader of the delegation, paid him a fact finding visit mission at the commission. Mahmoud said the list of candidates already screened by the INEC for the national election will be released on the 9th of November, while the 2019 general election will take place in 1,158 constituencies across Nigeria. We have completed the election process plan. We have issued a timetable and schedule of activities for the 2019 general election. There are 14 activities who have started implementing the activities. We are now on activity number five, I believe. Um, <clears throat> that is from the 9th of this month, we shall display the list of candidates for the 29 governorship elections and 991 state constituencies nationwide. Uh, between the 6th and the 12th of November, we shall also display the register of voters nationwide for claims and objections. In his remark, leader of the ECOWAC's fact-finding team and chairman National Electric Commission of Syria Loon, Mohamed Ali Conte, said they were in INEC's office to familiarize themselves with fact and express satisfaction with the level of preparations. The organization is actually responsible for your conducting these lectures. If you need to gather information, with respect to the elections, and more importantly, as a major stakeholder, as the EMB that's responsible for actually conducting the elections, to meet with you, discuss with you, and see how prepared you are for the elections. 
The presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, for the 2019 general elections, Atiku Abubakar, has created the planned donation of $500,000 and other materials donated to Guinea-Bissau by President Muhammad Bari administration. Atiku disclosed these in a statement by his presidential campaign organization said there is no need for Nigeria to donate to other countries now in view of the nation state of the economy and poverty ravaging its citizens. According to him, it is incongruous for a nation that has been officially named as the world headquarters for extreme poverty to donate our resources to others instead of using them to solve pressing domestic problems. And now to some diplomatic ties, Prince Charles and his wife, Princess Camilla, are expected in Nigeria from tomorrow, November the 6th to November the 8th in a high-profile visit. British High Commissioner to Nigerian Port Aquit, who disclosed this to journalists, said Prince Charles would engage in peace-building activities, including addressing the farmers' earthers' clashes. The Prince of Wales and the Duchess of Cornwall are also expected to have attendance with President Muhammad Bari at the presidential villa. According to him, the visit is also aimed at threatening the existing ties between Nigeria and Britain as member of the Commonwealth. Members group of Friends of the Health International FOEI has advocated the adoption of renewable energy to check climate change impacts in the country. Executive Director ERA FOEI Godwin Ojo who disclosed these in a state in a conference at Abuja said why Nigeria and other African countries continuing the quest to transit from oil, the developed world should not exploit its quest to recolonize Af Africa and perpetrate inequalities. Energy colonialism in ways it has happened with fossil fuel is already taking place with renewable energy. We are against monopolistic entities such as Shell, Chevron, who have monopolized the energy sector of the fossil industry. We are saying that just energy transition supposes the ownership of energy in the hands of local people. We are talking about energy democracy, a decentralized energy system that allows communities, individuals, to produce and supply energy. Other speakers also recognize the need for a divestment for fossil fuel development to pave way for decentralized energy systems. The ownership of the current system is not democratic. You have few individuals with the decision of what to produce, how to produce, where to produce. Because those who are bearing the brunt are different from those who are taking the decisions. We must, in clear terms, recognize the need to ensure that policies that we put on the table are the things that will restrict supply of the current kind of energy. And the new kind of energy, renewable energy that we are going to be looking at, other members of the society, including the vulnerable, must be involved in ownership of it. So that when decision comes to be taken, everybody will take the decision together. They develop themselves on the backs of our people in Africa, in Asia, in Latin America. They colonized our lands, they colonized our people, and that's how they became who they are. Whose backs are we going to stand on? Whose backs are left to stand on? We need a different future. We need a different development pathway. So we are saying that the people of Africa, the people of Asia, the people of Latin America, the poorest people of the world, they deserve a different future. They deserve a different energy future, which is not fossil fuels. The window of action in this regard is cloudy, but it is hope that if various government commit to the cost, a 20% increase of world energy supply in modern renewable energies will be reached by the year 2035. 
And now to the education sector where the Academic Staff Union of Nigerian University, ASU, has ordered its members across the country to commence an indefinite industrial action. This followed a meeting of leaders of the union on Sunday at the Federal University of Technology, Akuredi Ondo State Capital. National President of ASU, Professor Biodun Ubuyemi, told reporters that the union took the decision due to poor funding of the universities in the country. He consequently directed all members of the union across various universities to withdraw their services, adding that the strike would be a total and indefinite. You're still watching Super Screen News at 6. We'll take a pause break here and when we return, we'll bring you business news. Stay with us. Glad to have you back and now to the business news. The federal government has within the last two years incurred a total amount of 16 billion naira as transaction cost on the Treasury Single Account, TSA. Accountant General of the Federation, Ahmed Idris, who disclosed this in Abuja said the federal government will no longer bear the service charge on all payments to its ministries, departments and agencies and as such costs will be borne by the payer. According to him, the federal government had been bearing the cost of transmissions of funds into the TSA and would not want to do so anymore, adding that within the last two years, the government spent almost 16 billion naira in the direction which ordinarily should be borne by those making the payments. And now to the oil and gas sector where the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, has recorded an improvement in the production of natural gas by 8%, despite 1,858 cases of vandalized pipeline points between July 2017 and July 2018. According to a statement issued by NNPC, 3.08 billion cubic feet of gas was produced during the period under review representing an average daily production of 7.83 million standard cubic feet. In the downstream sector, the July report revealed that the corporation continued to ensure increased PMS supply and distribution across the country to sustain seamless distribution of petroleum products and zero fuel queues across the nation. In the upstream sector, the report disclosed that average crude oil price stood at $72.57 barrel in July 2018 has again $72.67 per barrel in June 2018. As well on the oil and gas sector, a new economic report from the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, shows that the country has earned 207.54 billion naira from crude oil and gas exports in the first half of this year, falling short of the federal government target of 661.38 billion naira. It says at 2.69 trillion naira or 4.5 percent of the gross domestic product, gross oil revenue fuel fell below the proportionate budget estimate by 30.1 percent before it rose above that of the first half of 27 by 66.5 percent. The CBN also said the drop in oil revenue relative to the proportionate budget estimate was attributed to decline in the volume of production and exports during the period. And away from business, we take another short break and when we return, we'll bring you foreign and spot news in a beat. Join us again. <music> 